Hey, everybody. Welcome into the latest edition of One with the Hive. We, of course, have Sixers basketball back tonight as we had some good NBA games already between I mean, the Magic was a good game, but it really don't matter because it's between the Magic and Nets. But uh, that was a pretty it's got seeding implications game. Oh, yeah, but those teams ain't going anywhere. <laughs> that, in my opinion, those teams aren't going anywhere. Then you have Memphis and Grizzlies, which really matters because the Grizzlies are right in front of Portland and Portland won that game. And then we so we had a lot of good games so far. Obviously, Nick Wright shouted out the Celtics, even though they lost, uh, and said they would still be a dangerous team to play because they played the Bucks. So there's been a lot of good games so far. So before we go into today's tilt, uh, what have you thought of the resumption of play as a whole so far, and how's your day going? I think the resumption of play has been great. Um, I, yeah, obviously missed the crowd noise, but I think what they've done um, with the seating, you don't really um, – they did it well, so it's not like baseball where you see all the empty seats in the stadium. They kind of have it like blocked off and and have all the screens there to kind of similar block to it. the NHL. So I, yeah. So I think it's gone really well in that sense because it doesn't show how empty it is. So I think they did a really good job. And then the play, I mean, listen, it's gonna take time to get back to the way it's going. Um, the the play in general hasn't been where you want it to be. It's kind of been some ugly basketball here and there. Um, it was disappointed to see Memphis lose that game in overtime, but credit to the Trailblazers for fighting through that one. My favorite game had to be um, Rockets um, Mavericks last night. It was a fantastic game. Um, that was, I mean, there's no defense in that game really, but overall it was a <laughs> tremendous game. Uh, James Harden went off, uh, Przingis went off, uh, Luca had a triple double. So, a lot so of did good, Russ. Yeah, Russ had 31. A lot of good stuff there, and, and um, a lot of good. St- Things from the superstars you want to see there in terms of scoring. Obviously, you want to see them lock down a little bit on defense, but I think this is what you're going to get with the eight game regular season just because um, I don't think they're going to put the defense out there just yet for multiple reasons. One, you don't, I, mean, you kind of, I, th- I honestly think they're going to back off a little bit with the virus going on. And then two, you don't want to get hurt before the playoffs because a lot of these guys playing already, like that Rockets Mavericks game, yeah, you're playing for seeding, but you already got your playoff spot locked up and, um, when it's all said and done, seeding doesn't really matter a whole lot this year. No, that's a good point. When you're in the um, when you're in the um, regular season, you're going to be coming back. Like if I'm coming back, and I know we're a good team and we're playing an average team, and I think we're going to win pretty decently, I'm probably not going to come right up on you in the paint and guard you like I would in a uber competitive game normally because I'm going to be like well I think we're going to win this game let me not get that close to this guy just in case so then nothing happens just in case where I I see that that's a good point some people because if you're going to be cautious it would be also mainly for teams like Houston that have like like that are kind of like placed in their seating that would have to do a lot to move up and the team in front of them would have to do a lot to lose in order to flop Um, so like that makes sense to me because you're not going to want to one get injured like you said but two you're not going to want to set yourself up for possibly unfortunately getting sick before the playoffs even though they've done a great job at controlling it in the bubble you never know as stuff goes on obviously there's got to be going to be like Adam Silver said at the forefront at least one two or a couple cases when you're playing in the bubble he doubts there's going to be zero throughout the he said that at the beginning I doubt there's going to be zero throughout the entire thing that would be great but it's probably not realistic to think there's going to be zero during the entire thing because you never even know where this thing comes from sometimes. So that's a really good point. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as it continues to go on. And I think uh, right now the league's scoring at a high rate compared to normal seasons. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And obviously mm-hmm. we got another big slate of games today and the rest of the weekend. And coronavirus-wise, it's been going really well. There's been no more uh, positive tests. So um I think NBA is going in the right direction. They, I'm, I'm pretty confident they find a way to get this done inside the bubble. No, I think they'll find a way to get it done, too. I was just saying your point is still valid because, like uh, Silver said, he thinks that they have a few positive tests as they're doing this. So far, they've been very good. So, And that will be the next test is they haven't had any tests or any positive yet. So that's going to be the test is once they do get one, like Silver said, how do they – I mean, I'm sure they obviously have a plan – in place, yeah. but how well can they handle it and how well do they get it shut down fast before it well, spreads? Well, let me tell you. Because we all know, we all know if it, if it does start to spread yeah. a little bit and it gets 
trapped in the bubble, that could turn into a mess. So, um, <laughs> hopefully, and, and that's the and that's the sad part is once someone does test, there's no way to prevent who they who they already hung out with. So, I mean, obviously, you can get them away from the team as fast as possible, quarantine, but it doesn't change the fact that they've been playing on the court with them the last the last however many hours or days. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how well they're able to shut it down or shut that player down and stop the virus, not shut down the league. Um, no, I got you. when it happens. No, that makes but, sense. But I do Silver trust. loves talking about it, so I, I, I'm confident in what Silver's got in place, unlike other sports. No, both um the leagues that are in a bubble, including soccer, actually, I should throw soccer in there, have actually talked about so three leagues that are in a bubble. Have talked, the championship. have talked about, um, well, soccer, we already know what they did. They just booted the team the hell out of the league. Um, but we um, – we know uh, the protocols they're going to do. I don't think the NBA in a play, unless if it's like a team. Now this sounds terrible, but if it's a team, I'm trying to find a nice way to say that that's not in contention, like the Wizards that had issues, then they would probably just boot the Wizards and then find a way to rearrange the schedule because the Wizards were not going to probably be a playoff team. So, like, it, that's why it's, like, very biased, probably, how they're looking at it. Because, obviously, if Houston has issues, that's a major problem compared to if the Wizards. And it's not like you want to have either of the teams have issues. But I'm just talking about league logistics. If a top team in the league has a major issue, it's a lot harder to figure out than if a bottom team where you can just do what the MOS did with FC Dallas and just tell them to get the hell out of the bubble. No, yeah, absolutely. I agree but, um, that's uh, that's the um, difference they have there. But I think they are doing a great job. Uh, all the leagues in the bubble, um, other than, well, baseball's not in a bubble because their commissioner's a doofus, but uh, we'll just leave it at that. The um, But anyway, we have a 1 o'clock game that's coming up soon. Miami and Denver, that'll be on by the time we're done, we put this out. That'll be a pretty good game. Then we have the Jazz and Thunder that'll be on right after we put this out pretty much at 3.30. Um, that'll be a very good game. But let me get your thoughts before we move into the Sixers. Who do you think's going to win? Obviously, the one team's favorite, but it's the regular season. Who do you think's going to win tonight's game against the Pelicans and Clippers at 6 o'clock? They have the um, – on score, they have the Clippers as a minus 5. Real quick, I, I know these will be, won't be out beforehand, but I will say – the Heat Nuggets is important to watch, obviously, with the Heat. Um, being in front of the Sixers, we need them to lose, maybe creep up and get get away from that matchup. Um, but I do. I think Nuggets take that Heat game. Uh, surprisingly, the Heat are favorite at uh, two and a half, but give me the Heat. Um, or give me the Nuggets in that game over the Heat. I think the Nuggets are the better team. And then the Thunder uh, Jazz. Uh, Thunder are favorite by two in that game, and give me the Thunder in that one. But going on to tonight's games, I mean, we'll, we'll start with the Pelicans Clippers, I think you said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On score, it's a minus yeah. five. I don't know what you're looking at. So, yeah, it's mine. I, yeah. I got minus five as well. Okay. Um, give me the Clippers all the way. I'll take Clippers, honestly, by double digits. Um, I, I don't think, I'm not big on the Pelicans. Uh, they found, I don't know how they didn't win that game the other day against. Because um, they took out Zion. Yeah, but I mean, my point is, uh, I, well, I that's why. How, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm saying I don't know why you why why you take him out or whatever. But oh, okay, gotcha. He, Zion's not happy. Um, he he was mad about not playing more. I, that seems like that's the way they're gonna coach him. I guess until the well, right right now they're gonna miss the playoffs. Well, so maybe maybe until next year. Um, but listen, I, I don't think who's gonna guard Kawhi? Nobody. Who's gonna call Paul George? Nobody. Patrick Beverly, Drew Holiday, it's pretty much a wash. I, I would think we honestly would have had if he was playing more minutes, um, like actually playing regular minutes. Zion or one of them because of his athlet, blah 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 athleticism. I don't know if it would have worked. I don't think. But that, I, I don't think, think that works. I think they would have tried it because nobody else matches up size wise. But like, I mean, that's Pat fine. Be- if, if, if like you Pat th- Beverly doesn't yeah. match up size wise against Kawhi, obviously. Kawhi that's Lennon. fine then. If you want to throw Zion on. Kawhi or Paul George, that gives me a mismatch down low. I'll take Montrez uh, Harrell all day if Zion's not going to cover. Yeah, him. that's true. Then you would need somebody to guard Harrell. Because so, they don't have uh, if, if you if you want to throw Zion on George or Kawhi, go for it because I'm opening up down low and just crushing down down low in the paint. Um, 
but yeah, I, I just think this is such a mismatch. And I mean, there's a reason why the Clippers are currently the two seed in the West and the Pelicans are out of the playoffs. And I, I'm surprised the line's only Clippers by five, to be honest. Um, so give me Clippers covering the spread there. Uh, what'd you say the over under is? Uh, I got two thirty and a half. There you got. I didn't even go to over on. Okay, so I got two thirty and a half. I'll take one twenty. If it's one twenty, uh, I'm gonna take just under two thirty. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't see the over under in my shit because I didn't go to score bet. I just looked in score. At the but even moment. even though the spreads are a little close at five, the money lines all Clippers all the way at negative two ten. So I, I mean they. I think that says it all. They're expecting a, a Clippers win. I just don't. I guess they don't. They don't see it in terms of uh, points wise, like I do. But the money line says Clippers all the way. And then getting into the final game tonight, Lakers Raptors. I'm excited to watch this game. A um, couple cool matchups here. Obviously Davis Lebron on the Lakers, but I'm interested to see what kind of Raptors get back at it. Um, obviously they overachieved expectations without Kawhi to start the year. Uh, so we'll see. If they're able to keep up that, that momentum after being shut down a little bit, I, I'd expect uh, Siakam to be fine. Um, I don't know why his game would drop. Kyle Lowry's, he's a veteran, he'll be fine. I expect Ibaka to be fine. So, I, I mean, I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. Ultimately, though, I think Lakers find a way to scrap out a win. Um, I don't know. What do you have What do you have on the spread on that one? Uh, what I had on the, the only – the Lakers were only a minus 2.5. Okay, that's what I got uh, as well. Yeah. Um, I was going to say Lakers by three or four a- after late game fouling. So I'll take I'll take the Lakers in a close game. Um, and then current I'll, says 223 even. Uh, for over-under? For the total, yeah. I'll take the over-over 223. I think this kind of gets a high-scoring game. Um, I, I don't – obviously both teams can play defense here and there, but overall I think – I mean, I think we're shooting at – Around like a one, 120 to 117, 115 game, which puts you at around like 135, 137, depending on which which way you swing it. So, give me the over, give me the Lakers, just barely covering that two and a half point spread. Yeah, well, the Lakers uh, beat the Clippers off of LeBron deciding, obviously, like he normally does, whenever he can, whenever he wants to play defense, to turn into God, um, and then guard two people on the last play of the game. In Kawhi Leonard and Paul George to basically yes. make sure that that game did not go any further. That is um, why he's the best player in the game currently. Now, how you guard two people at the same time is beyond me, especially when it's those two people. Hey, but, but, you, don't, you, don't, you don't question. You don't question the best player. You just let him do his thing. Uh-huh. You just you just have fun watching it. You don't question him. But no, I agree with you. I think the Lakers will probably take that game by a little bit. I do think that game will probably be close. Uh, That's gonna be fun. That's a good. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's going to be in the middle of the Sixers game. Um, Sixers should just end before they get to the ending. Um, I think they'll start probably around halftime in the Sixers game, so he'll miss the beginning. But uh, I'll be excited to watch that that close closing spot or closing parts of that game. Yeah, yeah. If all goes well, that should be a very good game. But now, anyway, we're moved into our Sixers, who are actually labeled as, which was a little a little surprising to me because how well did we play the Pacers this year? We're. I was actually gonna get into that. We're actually currently losing the season series to the Pacers two games to one. Um, okay, cool. No, I thought I thought I was wrong because I I looked at our favorite and we have one of the best spreads. That's why I was looking at it and I'm like, wait a minute, did we do good against the Pacers this year? That's why I wanted to ask you that because we have a minus six, which looking at all the games tonight, that's the best spread. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's because of a couple different things. Uh, Victor Oladipo's out. Um, Malcolm Brogdon's day to day. He's kind of banged up a little bit. Did we lose every game with Vic though? I I don't remember if he played. Yeah, I don't remember either. Um, let me look real quick. I got the box scores next to me. Um, they're also missing Sabonis, uh, All Star they had, I believe he made the All Star game. Um, so they're missing some key guys there. So I, that's why the Sixers are swung favorites in, in that direction. Um, Victor Oladipo did not play in our 101 to 95 loss earlier in the year. Oh, cool. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon dropped 21, and TJ Warren dropped 21. Those were the guys that killed the Sixers um, in that game. And then in the second time we lost, so we got 
be pretty bad the second game. 115-97. to 97. Uh, Leading score with Sabanis at 23. TJ Warren at 21. Victor Oladipo, I do not see, so I would say he did not play once again. Okay, um, yeah, so, so we lost to them twice without Victor. So. Yes. Except um, for the one game, a guy that's also not in was a huge factor. Yes, and then both those games were on the road. We know the Sixers story on the road, so not surprising there. Um, they won the game at home by three points, which was uh, obviously a close game if you look at it that way. I guess. So let's just say this. The story tonight is going to be find a way to slow down T.J. Warren. He dropped 29 even in the loss, so he's the guy that's been killing the Sixers pretty good. Um, so we've never faced Victor Oladipo this year. And obviously we won't tonight either. According no. to ESPN, according to ESPN, he's listed out, which kind of surprised me. I guess he's just not healthy um, in terms of conditioning wise because he did play in the scrimmage the other day. Um, but according to ESPN, on their injury report, uh, he is out. Um, dated August first uh, was must have been this morning thing. I, I didn't expect him to get his normal minutes, but I thought they'd at least give him some time to try to get the try to get him back out there and ease things back. But obviously with them. Being a pretty secure of a playoff spot, they want to take things. They'd rather take a loss tonight than lose him for the rest of the year. But yeah, overall, overall, I'd I say, just saw it will be determined game to game. I looked it up as you were talking. It says Pacers guards availability will be determined game by game. Okay, so, so yeah, it's yeah. So we'll see. I'll probably get back out there. My guess is around game three. He'll probably sit him out for another one. But I mean, listen, if this. If this was a normal year and um, we were actually fighting for home court and stuff, this would be an important game because this is going to settle the tiebreaker. And I guess it still is an important game because depending on who you want to face, um, who you want to face in the standings is, or in the first round of the playoffs is where you're going to match up here. Um, obviously, right now, if the season ended, you're playing the Celtics. Uh, if you if you win tonight, you move up to the five spot, and uh, you get matched up with the Heat. So kind of in- interesting note there. I mean, I never I never root for my team to lose. I know some people are doing that. They want them to lose tonight. That way, you stay with the Celtics because me my or even myself, I'm afraid of the Heat that first round. I think that's our worst matchup. Uh, anybody in the playoffs, I, I don't think we match up well. Heat scare me more than the Bucks do, honestly. I mean, obviously, but I'm not saying we have an easy way with the Bucks. I'm just saying in terms of matchups, the Heat are more. Uh, more scary to me so i'm never again i'm never gonna be one of those guys to say oh i hope we fall tonight that way we don't move up no i'm always gonna cheer for my team to win but i'll be interested to see what the team does in general um in all honesty heat have a very tough schedule while we have an easy schedule so i think honestly we're gonna move up to that four spot if it when i did the math and looked at calculations uh sixers i had the sixers actually beating the heat out by a game uh when i did this looked at the standings um interesting to note though I mean, it'd take a long shot, but I forget what the Celtics have. But if they um, if they struggle like they did yesterday, you you could find your way maybe sneaking up to that three spot. You win the night, you're only three back. So it'd be interesting to see what happens uh, in terms of that. But it's, I guess let's start breaking down the night's game. Yeah, that would that would be uh, dependent upon if the Celtics um, start to stink. Um, which well, prob- I mean, Tatum, Tatum yeah. only dropped five points last night. Um, Kemba Walker's obviously dealing with a lot of knee issues. So Tatum left and came back. Was Tatum one of the people that was in the bubble, then out of the bubble, then in the bubble? Or am I thinking of somebody else? I don't know. I think he's been in there the whole time. I could be wrong. Okay, gotcha. I, could, I think I'm thinking of somebody else. I was just wondering because I was going to say that could factor in like it did with Zion, if that was See, the case. To me, it would factor in, in your conditioning, but I don't think it messes with your shooting too much. When you're in the NBA, I mean, you no. can make shots at will. Yeah. I mean, but good news on the Sixers front for tonight. Joel Embiid, who missed the last two exhibition games, I always believed it was just caution. But um, he's not on the injury report today, so I think they just kind of rested him and let him do his thing in terms of conditioning off the court. Um, that way he was healthy and ready to go. So he's a go for tonight, and I expect him in the starting lineup. And the ones joining him is going to be Embiid, Simmons, Harris, Richardson, and uh, Shake Milton. So a new starting lineup tonight, a new rotation be interesting to see how they manage it, and I, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm ready and excited for this to work, and I think it's going to work out for the better for the Sixers. And I expect us uh, again. I expect a deep run from the Sixers here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be good. I was wondering for you though, with that whole lineup, do you think we're going to? That's going to be something that's going to stay steady through every game, or it's going to be matchup based. 
like if we match up size wise better against one team where you where Shake might not match up game wise against that X team, do you think you would still start that lineup? Yes, I, I think unless if it's a train wreck early on, I, I think and I, I think they stick with it. I think they should stick with it, especially if it works. Why switch it? Um, and I mean, no, no, no point guard in the East Conference is really that big if you think about it. I, no. I mean, you run down the you run down these teams. I mean, yeah. um, Celtics got Kemba. I mean, he's what six three, maybe. maybe? I, I would yeah, think Shake. I mean, what's? I guess I gotta look up. Uh, let me see what Shake's listed out. Oh, no, Kemba six three. Um, Shake Millen six. So Shake Millen six five two oh five. I mean, that's not. Maybe you want a little more weight on him, but in terms of height wise, uh, I mean, Kemba's pretty, only six foot. That's a pretty good size yeah. there. So I, I don't. Honestly, this makes the Sixers even. Obviously, you move forward for the bench. So I don't want to say bigger, but you move Simmons down low. I mean, this puts you still at a good size. I mean. Again, like you just said, Kemba's was six foot. That's smaller than I thought. Kyle Lowry's probably yeah, six one, six two, one, six one, six two at best. He might be six foot two. So I don't think I think Shake Milton size wise matches up fine with everybody else. That's why I think you'll you'll stay with this um this lineup no. unless if it's a train wreck and doesn't work, which I don't see that happening. They look pretty good in exhibition games. Um, I think uh, no, nah, I think you run with it, and and give give Brett Brown credit because and he probably knows it, but a change like this. This could be your job, in all honesty. If this blows up in your face and the train wreck causes you to lose early in the playoffs, say first round of the Celtics or Heat, you're done. Like he's 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 putting his job on the line here, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That is a very good point. Shake Milton's also one of those sneaky six three guys. Like you look at him, you don't think he's like that tall, and then it's like, oh shit, he's six three. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Well, <laughs> you're six three because ESPN has him listed at six five. Oh, does it have him listed? I must have been looking at like a draft thing or something. Then he probably is six five. He maybe I was looking. I think I was looking. Well, at but it. a lot of people usually have it different. It just depends on where they're at. But yeah, ESPN has him at six five two oh five, which I didn't realize he was that tall. No, I might have been looking at too because this is over a year or so old. This might be like when he got drafted. Like but he had grown like a couple. Still, of still grown. Still grown since getting drafted. Yeah, that two I guess, that spurt. Um, I had to meet him. But the on the line tonight, who do you think – you kind of brought it up already, but who do you think would be the biggest deterrent to the Sixers winning this game? I think you already answered that question pretty much, but uh, if you wanted to explain it a little bit further. Sorry, repeat that question. Who would be the biggest deterrent to the Sixers winning tonight's game? I'm pretty sure you already answered it like a couple segments ago, but – the biggest deterrent to have the Sixers win the game, I'd say. That's hmm. unless we're not going with TJ. I thought I was just giving you a layup for TJ Warren there. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so uh, okay, so I was thinking, I was thinking about like what Sixers struggling because we were talking. Okay. No, 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 no. Like what? Who's going to be a deterrent on the? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would go with TJ Warren with Victor Oladipo out tonight. Uh, with them missing Sabanis as well, missing two big scorers, two good playmakers. Uh, obviously, Pacers are going to have to lean on someone, and who's going to be that guy? To, who's going to be that guy they lean on? Um, it's 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 going to be T.J. Warren. He's going to man. He's going to man the offense now. I mean, obviously, uh, it's it's not that he's going to be a deterrent, but uh, it's going to be fun to get out there and watch T.J. McConnell again. Uh, we'll see when he comes in and faces the Sixers. Uh, it's always funny. Um, especially in this bubble situation. I remember when they played him the first time, he like went over to Brett Brown and stuff. So I expect some funny things there with this being a bubble game, not the playoffs yet. But um, no, yeah, it's going to be TJ Warren. Uh, other guys you kind of got to gotta be ready for in terms of this Pacers team is, and, and here's the thing, matchup-wise it's fine, but I still like Miles Turner. Um, he's always been a good player. He, I mean, he's got good size on him. I mean, I don't think... I think Embiid's a pretty good matchup against him, so I think Embiid will be fine. But he's just a fun guy to watch, and if he gets if he gets hot early, I'd watch out for him to have a breakout game. Um, so I, I'd say T.J. Warren and uh, Miles Turner are the two like for sure guys to look out for. Um, sleepers though, if if you let them get hot, they could kill you. Um, Malcolm Brogdon, I mean former rookie. Who participated in their shoot around, by the way, because he had a neck injury. 
Okay, he's been day to day, so he even might sit out. So imagine if he sits out. There's no reason the Sixers should lose this game. Um, but no, yeah, Malcolm Brogdon. If you let him get going, he he can he can for sure kill you at some points. I'm not huge on him, but I have seen him get hot a little bit, and that's um, honestly he's uh, Justin Holiday. Um, he again, I'm not huge on him, but. He's put up double-digit points against you earlier in the season. Um, not a bad shooter, 42% from three. So if you give, if you, if you let him get open, he'll knock it down. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure how much he plays now. Let me see what his minutes are. I mean, he was a great player in college, but he's he's, he's getting 20 minutes a game this year. That's actually it's pretty good good rotation minutes. Doug McDermott. Obviously, we all saw what he did in college. Doug, you, let him, yeah. you let him get going. I mean, obviously, that guy can light it up. I mean, I've seen him kill Villanova enough to know that. I didn't even realize he was playing that many minutes. That actually is a, a lot of minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, he's shooting 44.5% from three, so obviously a fantastic number. Uh, 10 points a game um, through 20 minutes per season. So 20 minutes per game throughout the season. So just a couple guys there and, Doug, and a couple role players there. And Doug McDermott, Malcolm Brogdon, I'd say are the two guys, but or two role players to look out for. But, yeah, the two for sure guys, Miles Turner, TJ Warren. Um, again, I expect them to be the – not shut him down, but keep him afloat. Oh, and then here, this is gonna be a good test for Shake's defense early on because he'll he'll be on T.J. Warren, I think. Uh, now with the change, so it, it's gonna be a good test for Shake early defensively. Uh, I haven't really got a true feeling on Shake's defense yet. Obviously, we loved when he got hot shooting wise, but uh, I'll be interested to see if he can stay up with T.J. T.J. Or with Warren today. Um, well, yeah, looking at it, I just want to see what he did against the Sixers this year. Miles Turner, 10 points, 6 rebounds um, through 28.7 minutes per game in the three games against the Sixers. So, nothing too exciting there. So, yeah, Embiid's, Embiid's had his way with Miles Turner early on in the – or not early on, uh, throughout the throughout those three games this season. So, I expect nothing different tonight from Embiid. Uh, I guess the way you worry maybe is now with – when Embiid comes out, how well can Horford guard him? Because I'm sure the Pacers will try to exploit that matchup uh, a true. little bit. Uh, so I think that might be big on uh, Horford's hands tonight. Uh, but, yeah, my last thing, I guess, on TJ Warren, I know I've talked about him a lot, but in his three games against the Sixers, just to put it in perspective, he is shooting – I got to look up how many threes he's taken against us, but he is shooting 75% from the three-point line. His three point percentage is seventy five percent. So let me see how many threes he's actually taken against us, if I can find it quickly, because um, obviously that is a tremendous number. Um, but he's averaging twenty three point seven points per game, a steal per game, uh, two assists, three rebounds. So obviously he's more just a scorer, not all that extra stuff in the game. But yeah, field goal percentage is sixty five, three point percentage of seventy five. Um, but yeah, so I mean I don't know if you agree with that on who on TJ, but. He's yeah, the I, I, I would consider T.J. Warren to be the guy. The other guy would have been Brogdon if he's able to play because Malcolm Brogdon, I remember killing us when he played with the uh, Bucks, right, before coming to the yeah. Pacers. Yeah, 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 he's always had his way. With so, this, even as a youngster, he did, which he's still a youngster, but even as a very youngster, he did very well with us on the Bucks. But I did read Glenn, who obviously is one of our – guys that works one of the hardest workers on the team is unlikely to play today so glenn robinson is unlikely to be part of our rotation today and then not that netto's as big of a deal but he's probable for the opener um so not really to, to touch on these guys real quick and real quick tj warren is six for eight from three against the sixers so a handful That's it's about it's about two or three two and a half two and a half, yeah, about two and a half a game um so I mean, it all depends. He we went 0 for 2 last game we faced him. He was 4 for 4 the first game and then 2 for 2 that second game. So that's how you get to that. Um, yeah, in terms of Glenn Robinson, yeah, I, I like to get him back for the playoffs. I, I'm not too worried about it in a game tonight. Um, just no. because the Sixers match up so well. Pace is already missing guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Robinson and what he can offer to the team as a, a role player. But in, I mean, in terms of if you match him up, match him up against who the Pacers are missing, I mean, the guys they're missing in Sabanis and Old Depot are better than Robinson. So, I, I don't think, again, it's a little bit hurt to the ro- uh, rotation, but we'll be fine. I mean, you got Horford coming off the bench. You got Korkmaz coming off the bench. You got Thibel coming off the bench. Um, Burks, you got off the bench. Um, I, all in all, I'll be fine. Um, 
Real quick, Burks remind me of Burke. Uh, I know you like Trey Burke. I don't know if you followed the game last night, but he actually had a, a field day last night. Trey Burke shot the lights out last night. I forget what he finished, but at one point in the game, he was eight for eight from three. Yeah. Not, not to get off topic, but I, I just knew you like. You, I just knew you liked him, so I just thought I'd give you that shout out for saying how much you liked him throughout the year and how we should have kept him over Nito. Um, but yeah, I was laughing because he just kept hitting shot after shot. He finished. Yeah, Trey. I, mean, I didn't realize he finished that day, but uh, that that could have a game. He finished the game 11 for 16 overall, 8 from 10 from 3, 31 points, 6 assists. Yeah. And yes. a plus 9-point plus nine differential. Yeah, that's why uh, he would have been much better for um, the Sixers, uh, Elton <laughs> Brand, than Raul Nato, who I can probably win in a shooting competition against some on certain days. Um, <laughs> like, like, that dude's so on and off. Like, he's basically a point guard version of J.R. Smith at this point of his career. Like, yeah, I agree. I, on he's going yeah, to go for that 8 yeah. for 10 or he'll go 0 for 10, one or the other. <laughs> you just yeah. got to know when. If, if he's on to leave a minute, if he can't make a shot, they'll get him out fast. No. But Raul Nato, I mean, you don't want to have him in for much more than five to seven minutes in general. So that's why. I, I don't <laughs> think he sees the court that much, if I'm being honest. I don't think he does either. But that's also why it would have been better to keep Trey Burke. Because if Trey Burke was hot, he would have been an extra shooter to see the <laughs> court. Raul Nato has no chance of being an extra anything, really. He's kind of just like one of those guys that's just on your bench in case some too much hell breaks loose. And then you're like, well, we're screwed yeah. now. Um. Like, it would be like a Flyers goalie situation where it's like, oh, crap, all our point guards got injured. Uh, and then you have to, like, put somebody in that's not even that good, and you're like, oh, this isn't good. And then somehow you do great, and you're like, oh, okay, well. Um, that actually seems like how Philadelphia would somehow get four, have all uh, yeah. loose, and then have Joel Embiid just score, like, 80 a game. And then it's like, oh, well, yeah, we got uh, to the playoffs because I'm uh, the second coming of freaking Will Chamberlain. And you're like, oh, well. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> um, but tonight, who do you think? I'll give you mine first. The biggest X factor will be for us winning um, against the Pacers. I think because it's against TJ, you use TJ Warren. I think a big guy that might be guarding TJ Warren, that becomes a huge factor on both sides of the ball, would then potentially be Jay Rich. Because if they put him on TJ... Um, he's going to then have, if he can defend TJ, well, he then would, well, one mitigate the fact that we're probably not going to lose because if we can stop TJ Warren, as long as whoever's going Malcolm Brogdon doesn't let him drop 40, then we should be okay. I, I, um, I think that that would be the best bet unless if Malcolm Brogdon's kicking ass, then you might have to say, okay, Jay Rich, we need you to go on Malcolm Brogdon and hope whoever we put on TJ Warren now is not going to let him start dropping 40. But other than that, you would hope somebody else would pick up defense and he could just guard T.J. Warren because the, if he gets hot on defense, that's normally what gets J. Rich going on offense. He's one of those guys that's kind of reversed to most people. Most people nowadays get hot on offense and then they get all peppy and up and they're like, oh, yeah. And like right up in there getting all the steals on defense where you, you see it the opposite with Richardson. Whenever he cuts a pass off, whenever he makes that nice defensive play, now you see that higher sense of energy in the offensive zone. So I feel like a matchup like this plays well to him. That's why I would probably pick him actually as my player of the game, which is probably outside of the box for some people, but I would pick him as my player of the game. So you're going Richardson? Right? Yeah, I'll go Richardson, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I think he he it's fine. I don't know, obviously I can't I didn't see, but I don't remember who the head guard steals versus the Thunder, by the way. That's the other reason I picked him. If he can disrupt T J Warren like that. Yeah, I don't remember who they had guard TJ uh, through the season. Obviously, whatever it was didn't work. Um, I think it was. He's listed as a small forward, so my guess is they've been having uh, Harris on him. That's what I think so, too, yeah. Um, But I'd be interested to see that mix up. I just. I don't know if. I think that creates. That might create a little bit of a mismatch if you moved. Richardson on Warren, because then you're gonna have to move. I guess you move Harris to cover. You have to move Harris to cover. I wouldn't be too 
afraid of that then. Nah, I'd I'd be fine with it. Then you move Harris to face Jeremy Lamb. I'd be okay with that. Um, yeah, I'd be okay with that move. But I I'd say the I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go Ben Simmons tonight. I I know it probably sounds cliche picking the star of the team or whatever, but I think the switch. I'm excited to see it. Um, I don't know if he shoots like he did in the exhibition game. I'm not ready to see, say that. I think he's going to be really aggressive out of the gate. I mean, I know you're excited to see him at the four. You've called for it before. Um, no, but I, I really, I, I don't know. Simmons seems like he's on a mission to me. Um, again, I don't know if he's going to go out and shoot. I'm not going to predict any of that. But I, I will say, I, I think Simmons gets a triple double tonight. Um, I'll say, I'll nice. say a stat line. I'll say a stat line of like 17. Uh, 17 points, 12. Uh, I'll go 12 assists and uh, 10 rebounds. Um, we better not lose if that's the case. <laughs> hey, this is, this is Philadelphia Sports talking about. Simmons could drop 50. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost the game. <laughs> as frustrating as it would be, it would be a Philadelphia move for Simmons to drop drop 50 and um, not make the – not make the um, or not win the game. I saw a stat uh, – a while back when they were talking about the restart in the bubble. And it was on Victor. It was about Victor Old, or not Victor Oladipo, excuse me. It was John Wall. Or not, man, I cannot speak today. It was not John Wall. It was Bradley Beal. Bradley, yeah, Bradley. <laughs> Beal. Um, but assuming the Wizards don't go on a miracle, miracle run and they still miss the playoffs, the Wizards will be the first player or first team to waste a, 30 point, a player that averaged 30 points a year and not make the playoffs since the Sixers did it with Allen Iverson. I was like, that is such a Philadelphia thing to have a guy average 30 points throughout an entire season and find a way not to be one of the eight teams in the East to make the playoffs. That's true. No, that is, that is entirely true. I completely agree with that. The reason, though, how you said Ben seems extra determined is the reason I won with Richardson because he came back off of his hamstring strain, which if we had the regular postseason, he only would have been a few weeks back from. Um, now he had the full time to recover. Since being back, he seems to me like a guy that's almost like it's like a second camp for him. Like he because he looks solid, but he didn't look like you because he got injured. He didn't look like he didn't play like he would have wanted to play his first year in Philly. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. where now he's coming back and really has a chance to up his ante. And it seemed like he did that in most of the exhibitions. So if that energy carries over. That's why I also think it would make sense to switch him to guarding T.J. Warren because I'm pretty sure it was Tobias all season, and that obviously was a terrible decision. So um, let Jason Richardson do that, and then if Tobias has trouble with Jeremy Lamb, you could just put in Burks or somebody that's decent off the bench. Uh, that's actually pretty good on the defensive end. But yeah, no, I agree with you. I love Richardson, too. He's a good two-way player. Um, I want to see it keep going. Um, I think it's important for him to get a good start because I feel like he rides off momentum and consistency. When he's on, and when he's off, he still offers you defense, but like you could see it kind of affect him a little bit into the next game. So he's a guy you want to see get going early. Um, but no, I like that pick, um, especially if he does it offensively and defensively. He could get that. I will say there is one guy I want to – one guy I'm going to really pay attention to, and I think everyone should pay attention to in these eight games um, going into the playoffs is Korkmaz. I'm really interested to see what Korkmaz you get. Um, this is just the reason why I say that is because his home road splits are so different. Obviously, this isn't a road game; it's a neutral game. But obviously, it's not in the Wells Fargo Center, so I'm interested to see which Furcon we get. Um, in terms of, are you going to get more of the home one or the away one? Yeah, just to read you some of this, and it's pretty crazy if you think about it. Because I guess you live off the atmosphere. I don't know what it is, but his field goal field goal percentage at home is 48. 48- Point three percent. His three point percentage at home is forty five point three percent, and he averages ten point six points per game at home. Now, when he's on the road, his field goal percentage goes from a forty eight to a thirty nine percent, and his three point percentage goes from a forty five to thirty four. Like that, that's yeah, a that's pretty a big drop off. Jump. <laughs> so, I, my one of my players to watch off the bench, not just tonight, but overall into these eight games is Furcon because if he struggles through those eight games, listen, you know I'm a Furcon fan, but if he struggles through those eight, through those eight games because they're not home games, I think you got to think about cutting down his minutes. Um, 
get when you get into the playoffs. I, and who knows when Robinson comes back, what they do, whether they just go with the hot hand on who gets more minutes. But obviously, with Robinson being out tonight, I expect Furcon to get a lot of, a lot of good uh, minutes off the bench tonight. Um, so he'd be a player. He's my player to watch off the bench just because of those splits and see what he see which Furcon shows up. Well, Fur, <clears throat> excuse me, Furcon also doesn't help his own case because if he's not doing good offensively, he's not very good defensively. Like that's another thing I might be able to beat somebody in a competition on a defensive uh, he, competition. He's not, he's, he's not <laughs> where you want him to be, but I will give him credit. He's worked at it and he's definitely improved since last year. Oh, he's improved. The problem is he's still where Jr. was. Like. He's, like, improving to the level of, like, he's a guy that really didn't care about defense because in European basketball he could have just focused mainly on getting steals and offense. And then now he has to learn the North American style. So, like, he's kind of at JR level of defense now, so then you hope to improve past that because he's basically at the level of defense where whatever game he's actually locked in and wants to really try, then he looks pretty d- decent on defense. But that doesn't happen all the time, just like with J.R. Smith early in his career. <clears throat> that's more why I use that yeah. as the example. He kind of goes off of energy. But that's a good point. Furcon's one to watch because if he can get shooting, he's a guy that can do something similar to that Trey Burke game where we don't have many people because we got rid of Trey Burke that can do something similar to that game. Um, but – uh. Anyway, I don't know if you had a score prediction. That was kind of going to be the last thing I did, just say if we wanted to give how we thought our Sixers were going to do, what the score prediction was. For this game, by the way, the um, it's at 220 even currently with the minus six spread for the over-under. All right, so first I just say, um, yeah, well, keys to the game. One, stop T.J. Warren. Uh, two, play your game. It's going to be hard, obviously, in a bubble. So settle down, play your game. Don't force rush anything. So um, obviously take care of the ball and, and worry about your own game first. Um, I, I'd say that would be a big big factor of mine. And, and um, get on the break. Run it. I mean, we know Brett Brown loves to, loves the fast break. Uh, Simmons moving here helps him get a rebound. He'll be playing down low. He'll get more rebounds now. And I mean, yeah, he's not the point guard, but when he gets the rebounds, he's still going to run the offense and get down the floor on fast break. So get out and run. Um, if you, if you can get out and run, get a lot of fast break points early. I, I don't see, I don't see this game being close. If you if you get out on the run there early, if you if you slow TJ or, uh, Warren early on, use that on use that into the break on offense. I mean, you should get pretty good handle on this game early on. Um, you mentioned the over under being two twenty. You said, yeah, even, yeah, two twenty, even. I'm gonna take the under. Um, Sixers offense has been good to when they came back, but I, I really love. I mean, obviously it, it, it faltered at the end of exhibition games because you kind of obviously take a step back. But when they when our guys, our starters were in and stuff, and you mentioned Richardson's four steals uh, against the Thunder. I mean, this defense has been fantastic. Um. So I think the Sixers really uh, worry about and get out there on defense to start this game. I don't, I don't think, I don't think this is going to be as high scoring as the other game, NBA games have been so far. Um, so I'll, so I'll take the, I'll, I'll take the under on the 120. I'm going to go. You said the spread was six at the beginning of this preview. I also take uh, Sixers covering that spread. Um, I'm going to go 105. I'll go 105 to 97. Uh, 76ers win. Okay, gotcha. And then the spread was 220. Um, but uh, I would say, um, or the over-under, I mean. But I would say I would agree with that because these teams are kind of double-ended. Like, both teams kind of focus on both ends of the floor where some teams, like the Rockets, for example, focus yeah. obviously predominantly more at offense. Um, so that's why I believe you're exactly spot on with that. This will be a more defensive game. Um, I think the Sixers, because of someone having a good game, I was going to say I had my score at 110 to uh, 92. I had the Pacers getting 92 because I had us beating oh. a little bit more. Yeah, a nice, you got a nice 18-point win. I would love to see that. Yeah. Because so I had my feet up by the end of that game. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were going to, by the end, have our defense because – we have more of the talent level, especially without Vic and Sabonis on the court, kind of just 
stop them enough where then we'll just put in a few points and it'll separate it at towards the back half, like five, seven minutes of the game. That's what I was kind of figuring for that. We might be up by like seven yeah. to 10 and then all of a sudden we just shut them down and then just keep adding on. But that's how I would put it. But if you had any closing thoughts or just your Twitter handle, um, you can give that now and then we'll move on and just tell everybody to have a great day of watching a uh, basketball. Yeah, I just say, um, man, I hope you're right. I'll take an 18 point win. <laughs> I want my feet up by the end. If anyone knows me, man, I do not watch games sitting down with my feet up. So if I'm able to do that by the end, it was a good game. Um, but no, enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow. Um, you get three sports in the NBA, NHL, MLB. Um, for now, I would say, I, I, w- I would say four. Um, I, I don't know if MLS is playing today or tomorrow. I forget when those next games are, so I can't say four for sure. Uh, I do know the Union's next game is next Wednesday, so get ready for that in, that, in their Final Four. Um, but, yeah, like you said, enjoy, that's what I'm saying. Enjoy today and tomorrow with with, that, with all the sports because, honestly, we'll see how long MLB lasts. Um, uh, but, yeah, not to change it, but just to end it with the breaking news, um, Lorenzo Kane actually just opted out for the season. So um, nice that's old. the first or second player since all these cases have been happening to opt out. First player this weekend to opt out. Um, so yeah, we'll see how much longer uh, we get all these. But yeah, um, uh, Twitter is AJ underscore Santangelo. Uh, again, enjoy the weekend. Have fun. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, I echo that. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Have fun. Stay safe, everyone. Enjoy hockey and basketball um, because the latter you might not be seeing much longer. So watch some KBO baseball again, I guess. Get up early. Get your bones flowing get your juices flowing get back (laughs) into the uh game of kbo baseball again because they're showing it to the korean series how i honestly don't think espn's going to stop showing that to be honest with you because it's doing pretty good ratings and it doesn't conflict with the mlb i think they might just come up with a deal with the kbo for now on (laughs) but that's just me um but anyway it's been a great show on the Sixers, on the matchups there's some great basketball today and ahead as we hunt for the postseason I still want, even though I love people on the Pacers, this is the only time I'm rooting against a local guy because I hate how the NBA is just making Ja Morant look like they don't want him in the playoffs. So, Ja, get your team in the playoffs for me, buddy. Um, but Ja's made the playoffs, don't worry. Well, not if the Pacers keep winning. Because <laughs> they're right behind. Aren't they right behind them? Pacers? No, nah, Pacers in the Oh, East. not the Pacers, the, the Trailblazers, I mean. Because the Trailblazers beat them yesterday. And they're right behind the Grizz. So if the, I think it's like a three-game cushion. I mean, it has to. I don't know. For, I, I'd be surprised. I mean, Memphis would really have to go on a lead. I don't know their schedule. Maybe, maybe we'll talk about that in the next one. But yeah, because this says the Grizzlies are one. Uh, points. For, this is minus. They're minus one. They have a 30, and th- they're two games back about. So, yeah, now they're, they're about two and a half, games. Two and a half games back, but seven left. Uh, let's see. Not to go in detail. Let's see the Grizzlies. Got- Grizzlies got the Spurs next. Hopefully you can take care of them. Yeah. Um, I will see. But, hey, as long as, as – long- if the Blazers get in, that's fine. I just don't want the Pelicans in. No, that that's fine because I love CJ, and he's from the local area, and I always rep CJ and Dean. The problem is it seems like the NBA really wanted Zion to get in and Ja not to get in. That was just the outside. Oh, absolutely. Position. That's exactly so, what they – um, Obviously, uh, I would rather see Ja, who had a rookie of the year season, get in. But I will say a little quick last thing now that we brought them up. If the Blazer, Trailblazers do sneak in, get past the Grizzlies, I don't think they beat the Lakers. But that would be an interesting, interesting first matchup. Because that's not – you can't sleep on the – I mean, guys like Damian, CJ, and they're getting back guys healthy-wise. Uh, obviously, Carmelo's on there now. Um, that would be an interesting first-round matchup. I actually think Trailblazers could, again, not win, but turn into like six games, which uh, that that puts some wear and tear on you early on in the playoffs. So it would be interesting to see how that – factor in going deep into the playoffs, especially once they get to the conference finals, most likely against the Clippers. But yeah, that's that's my last thing. But yeah, like you said, hopefully Ja gets in. I like Ja. No, I agree. Yeah, I hope he gets in. I also hope he wins the Rookie of the Year. And I love Zion, but he only played 20-something games. You don't deserve Rookie of the Year. Sorry, buddy. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, 
this has been a one with the hive. This has been our look into the Sixers game and the rest of the playoff matchups. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a safe and productive day, everybody. For Joe, uh, Andrew, and you can find me at JJ Borick 26 on Twitter, the podcast at True Philadelphian Sportscast, spelled out on Instagram and Tumblr, and True, T-R-U, underscore Philly Sport on Twitter. Have a safe and pleasant day, everybody. Enjoy the great day of basketball. Peace out. Go Sixers.